Hello everyone and welcome to BHT Studio. Today we'll be looking at the brand new Fujifilm XS20, but as well the brand new lens here. Oh, it's upside down. There you go. It is the 8mm f3.5 RWR. And oh, okay, there you go. It says it there as well. 8mm f3.5 lens here and these two I don't think it's an accident that these two were launched at the same time I think the uh, Fujifilm wants this to be kind of a vlogging content creators camera obviously you can use it for more things I think an 8 millimeter lens or 12 mil equivalent in full frame you could do architectural as well as vlogging you could do a lot of different things as well the XS20 like the XS10 was kind of a baby X-H1 and now I guess this would be like a baby X-H2 or X-H2S actually to be more accurate as we will find out and so I think this is kind of a unique camera as well I, I just decided to show the other kind of cameras here you know Fujifilm has their rangefinder camera which is kind of how the whole X series started with the X100 as well as the original X Pro 1 and then they came out the X-T1 which is more of an SLR style the old film style and this is the X-T5 so this is the fifth generation processor and sensor and here is the OG X-H1 and so you know in terms of the grip having this deep grip here this is similar in terms of in spirit you know kind of a hybrid video and still center camera and then now we have the X S series which is a prosumer level of the the XH series so like the XH2 and so we're going to go over the details before we move on I just wanted to let everyone know that um, not a lot of reviewers would have a copy of this camera I know with Fujifilm Canada uh, this is a pre-production copy so whatever you see here this, this is not final production as well as firmware there's been multiple firmware updates while I've had this and the only reason why I have this camera is because Fujifilm asked me to be part of of the team that made the lifestyle photos and so you'll see maybe you've already went to the website you'll see some lifestyle photos well some of those would have been my photos and you probably could tell by that style so this is the reason why I have this so I have not been given a proper media brief yet as I'm shooting this video I do have to ship this back so I thought I would quickly shoot this video so that we could talk about the things that I do know but there are things in the menu that I've searched that I don't really know what it means. We'll find out soon, but I'm sure a lot of you guys already know. And so let's go over some of the things here and some of the, the questions you may have. So number one, what sensor does the X-S20 have? Because of course, we have the 40 megapixel sensor in the X-T5 and the X-H2, and we have the 26 megapixel stacked sensor in the X-H2S. Well, this one here, they went with a 26.1 megapixel APS-C X-Trans BSI CMOS 4 sensor. So the previous sensor that's in the X-T4 and the X-Pro3, so the same sensor in here, as well as the previous X-S10, so beautiful sensor. This is the first time the Fujifilm now has three sensors. We have the 26 megapixel stacked, which is the flagship sensor. And then we have the 40 megapixel that's in here. And now we have the 26 megapixel non-stack, but it still is a backside illuminated CMOS in here. And so combining that with the X processor 5, that's where things will get interesting. And I think that's where a lot of people wanted Fujifilm. They couldn't see, and I myself couldn't see either the stack sensor or the 40 megapixel sensor in cameras like the X100 6th generation or the XS20. It'd be better to go with the previous sensor because there's nothing wrong with it. And if anything, I thought maybe it'd be like a 30 megapixel or something like that. But I actually am really happy that they went with the previous sensor. I don't want to say older, but previous sensor, still a great sensor and for those that are buying something like this it is more than enough we have the fifth generation processor so that also means you have the latest firmware which includes all the new film simulations like the nostalgic neg as well as the, the high efficiency image files the HIF files in here and everything else that we've enjoyed about this fifth generation product here in the XT5 in the firmware you're gonna get this basically the same firmware with obviously slight tweaks because the cameras are a little bit different Another different thing here is, let's just open this bottom here, look at the battery. Ta-da! We have the NPW-235 battery in here instead of the older NPW-126. So they're able to squeeze it in here. See how 
See how tight that is in here? This camera is slightly bigger than the X-S10. I think unless I had it sort of side by side, uh, you probably can't tell the difference, but they did kind of redo this grip area. If you have an X-S10, you can even see slightly these buttons look a little bit different. So this has a nice feel in here and yet it still has that new battery. Another thing, of course, the XS10 did have the 3.5 millimeter jack on this side above the screen, right? So if you are vlogging, you can have your shotgun microphone up here and have the microphone plugged in here and it not be in the way of the articulating screen. But what they added to the XS20 is, look at that, what is this? What is this here? This is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And so you can see that little icon over there. So now you can actually shoot video, have a external microphone attached as well as monitor. So this isn't just for vloggers. If you are a video shooter, I know a lot of videographers prefer this uh, articulating screen here. You can have whatever microphone system on top as well as you can monitor. So this is a little, this is truly a baby X-H2S. And another thing you may notice is if you look at the dial here, this is also different. You have a dedicated vlog mode as well as video mode and you still have that quick video button here. And with these custom settings, you can also pick these as well if you want them to be custom stills or video settings. So technically you can actually have four video settings and then two more in uh, the vlog mode as well as video mode. And this again, lets you know that this is meant for vloggers and sort of YouTubers, content creators. Now this is the coolest thing about this new camera here. So I'm gonna go into uh, video mode here. So let's go video. Okay, so very boring thing we're seeing here. So let's just start the video here. Let's start it. And what do you see? Look at that. What do you notice? That is a three by two aspect ratio. So guys, we are getting open gate, 6.2K open gate in this camera, in the X-S20. Can you believe it? And so for those of you that might not know what open gate means, it's using the entire sensor. When you shoot video and it's cropped to 16 by nine, well, we know the sensor is not 16 by nine. The sensor aspect ratio is three by two. So you're losing a lot of resolution at the top and bottom. This shoots open gate, just like the X-H2S. With the older sensor though, and I think that's the trick how they're able to do open gate, because this does open gate H265. So this must have an ultra high speed card type two slot, which is still on the bottom. And there's just one in there right there, not two, but they must have increased it from the type one to type two to be able to do uh, open gate as well as H265. But let's go into video mode here. So we're in video and we'll hit this here and let's just go all the way up to the top. Video shooting mode, here we go. Can you see that? There you go, 6.2K and you can see the resolution down there, 6240 by 4160. Kodak here is, well, it says H, uh, let me see here. Let's just go into uh, movie setting, movie set setting here. Here we go. So we're at H265, all intra, 420, 10-bit at 360 megabits per second. And so that's pretty sweet for a camera this size to be able to have open gate. I mean, this is a crazy, crazy camera. Again, not meant just for vloggers. So if you are shooting video, you have your headphone jack, you have your microphone jack, you have your swing out articulating screen, and you're getting open gate video in a camera this small. But because it's this small, I think there's gonna be heat issues. And so, well guess what? This thing fits on here, right here. So now, Look at that. Look at this little baby X-H2S. So this truly is a baby X-H2S and you do have all those fan modes. Let's just go to uh, some of the settings here. I don't even know where it is. So you can see here, here's a cooling fan setting. Fan operates constantly at high speed. And I can hear that. I can hear that and I can feel that right now. And you have low and then you have auto uh, prioritizing the camera temperature, prioritizing low fan noise. and so. You can attach this here. I think for those of you that bought the X-H2 thinking I don't need a fan, but if you're gonna use this as a B cam to the X-H2S and this is off to the side and you are shooting open gate H265, I think you probably need this, but for a lot of us, I think we're not gonna be shooting open gate for longer than five, 10, 15 minutes. Anyways, the fact that you can attach this fan on here, I think is an awesome option. I still think a lot of us 
wouldn't buy this. For me, I actually was considering buying the X-H2S eventually to replace my X-T4, which I'm using that right now to shoot this video because that's my studio camera. I bought the X-T5. Uh, up to this point, I've been using the X-T4 over the X-T5 for video just because I do feel that the X-T4 is still better for video other than the fact that this can do a 6.2K but not in open gate. It's in 16 by 9 but I think for what I do it for, the X-T4 is good enough. With the X-S20, I actually think this can replace my X-T4 for studio work. The fact that it has the same sensor as the X-T4, but it has the latest processor. So it's more efficient and yet more powerful. This probably will replace my X-T4 and I don't need to spend the money. I don't need a stack sensor. This can pretty much do everything that I need to do in the studio. And if I needed to do extended video work, then I can always buy this fan here and attach this onto it. So this is a perfect sort of a one camera studio for a uh, content creator like myself that does video, that does talking head, that does overhead video, but nothing too exhaustive. I'm not doing long format film or documentaries. And so this is actually great for someone like myself. Now there are other kind of cool features here. One thing I noticed here is in auto mode, uh, let's here, you go in auto, and then if you go to autofocus here, let's uh, autofocus, it has subject detect, see that? It has subject detect, setting auto and what I realized is that auto means either if it's dog cat it will it, but you have to be in auto mode that it will automatically pick without having to switch back and forth now if I'm so I'm in auto mode here right if I get out of auto mode and go to P mode and again go into the subject see that there is no subject auto it's either going to it's either going to be subject on just like the XH2 XH2S and the XT5 see how that's on but then it automatically turns off face detect. And I wish it would have auto for all the cameras. So auto eye, this is how I prefer to have subject detect. I don't shoot animals, see that? So it's now subject detect on the human eye, but then that turns off the subject detect, where if you're in auto mode, it will automatically switch between the two, which is pretty darn cool. On a couple other things too, you can tell um, a lot of things are probably gonna be the same from the XS10 since this pro the sensor is gonna be the same from the XS10. Is that probably same screen as the XS10 as well as the same EVF. So you know, it's not, it's not having the higher end EVF. This is a 3.69 million dots. The eye relief isn't so great on here and you know it's there's not much here so if you're a glasses wearer you're still gonna have problems with this style of EVF. As well uh, you can tell you know I wish it had a d-pad but I think on these prosumer level ones they've just removed it. X-H2, X-H2S and the X-T5 also have it. X-Pro3 does not have it. Hopefully the new GFX cameras will have the D-pad, but everything else, I think it's on point. And for what this camera was built for, I think this is great. Now quickly talking about the eight millimeter lens, this was on the roadmap, so we're not surprised. Uh, when I first heard about this lens before it shipped out, I thought like, you know, who needs an eight millimeter? Again, if you were a vlogger, you know, I don't like using a stick while vlogging, so being able to hold this, or having that new little whatever that remote tripod thing they have will be great. As well if you're doing architecture photography. Now I have the 10 to 24. This goes wider. So being able to go 8 millimeter and this compact, I think that's kind of why it's 3.5. And if you're doing video, you know, you're not trying to get bokeh. You're not trying to get shallow depth of field. So if this went to f2.8, I don't think that would have been necessary. We saw the size of the 8 to 16 millimeter f2.8 from Fujifilm. And that was just a redonkulous size. And so f3.5, even if it was f4, I don't really care. With a lens like this, you don't really need to be faster than f3.5, especially if the penalty of going f2.8 means it's gonna be twice the size and weight. This is nice and compact. And I thought I would just do a quick, one more little test here. Let's just uh, check the weight. So let's just pull the lens off here. Now I have a memory card and I have the battery in here. So this is with memory card and battery. And also remember this is pre-production. So this is not the official weight, but I'm getting a 491.1 grams on the X-S20. And then for a second comparison, let's put the X-T5 on here. Battery, memory card, just one memory card and we are getting 562.2. So this is still bigger. You could tell by looking, it is, a, it is a bigger camera. Of course, it doesn't have that deeper grip, but at the same time, this has more metal in it, less plastic, as well as has larger heat sinks, and so it can handle longer video times. And it has bigger 
knobs it has more knobs on here and it's all metal construction so uh, this will be heavier it's still light this is still the most this was up to this point the most compact and lightest fifth generation product but now it has been dethroned by the xs20 it's now the smallest and lightest except for that deep grip but i think having that deep grip is a bonus because i mean you're never going to have a lens that is going to be shorter than the grip well, I shouldn't say never. There, there are some really small pancakey lenses, but in general, you can see this grip here is is really functional and useful uh, when you are shooting with this dial. And the way this works, you know, for those of us that are uh, that prefer the dials and knobs, it's still pretty good. Like, you know, when you are in, for instance, shutter priority mode, if you move the front dial, it is the shutter speed, and this is the exposure comp by default. And if you're in aperture priority mode, again, if you go to the A, the front becomes aperture control, and then the back is your exposure comp. This is always by default going to be film simulation other than if you change it to something else. And when you are in manual control mode, then you know then you got aperture and shutter speed or maybe it's the other way around or maybe you can program that. I also do change film simulations a lot. And so having that is great. You do have a pop-up flash, which I know a lot of people don't use, but as a point and shoot, if I want to just use this on my day off, it is nice to have a built-in pop-up flash. So that's the weight here. So let's just move this aside. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Fujifilm Japan, for giving me the opportunity to do the lifestyle photos. Thank you so much, Fujifilm Canada. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Mark, for sending this out to me to be able to, to do this. And as well, I look forward to the media brief and be able to get a production copy eventually. And I actually think I'm gonna probably just end up buying this. This is not the, the you know, this is not gonna be this. It's not gonna replace this. I love the dials and knobs on this. It's not gonna replace my X-Pro3. This is gonna be kind of like my hipster day off, sexy looking camera with my cool prime lenses. It is gonna replace, you know, me thinking I was gonna buy the X-H2S. This is the X-H1. But you know, I think this is gonna be a better fit for me. It's gonna replace my X-T4 as my main studio camera for overhead video, as well as talking head video. And if I ever do need to grab a B-cam camera, so I am, let's say I'm working with Chris and I'm doing a bit of B-cam work, being able to do open gate, being able to share with Chris, you know, have the same settings as him. So he has the A-cam with the X-H2S. I have the B cam who could do the same settings with this thing here and give the same files over to him and, and something compact like this and then be able to add this fan here. If you do need to push this a little bit more than what this is designed for, that would be great. This lens isn't meant for everyone, but for vlogging, this actually does work out pretty good, as well as for architectural, very well corrected, reasonably compact, and it works really well. And because of the open gate, having eight millimeter, being able to shoot vertical video or cropping the vertical video because of the open gate, and yet still being able to crop in because of the 6.2K, to crop into 16 by nine, you have a lot of space with this lens and body combination. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, ask me any questions down below, but by the time you see this video, uh, this camera would have already been shipped back to Fujifilm. So there's only so many questions I can answer for you. So wait for my full review when I get a production copy, as well as go check out my article at Fujilove. So thank you so much for watching and happy shooting.